Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Chopsmith. An upcoming project is to build a barn door to cover up this opening for my future shop. This is all inside of, of a barn building, if you will. Uh, I'll be building that out of these uh, two by sixes. I think there's a two by 10 as part of the build as well. The challenge is these are, are, are big, they're heavy, they're long, and they're really not ideal for cutting on something like a shopsmith machine just because they're so unwieldy. So I might just throw them over here on my chop saw. Problem with my chop saw, as you can see, it's on a very lightweight stand. Uh, I like this stand, but it just, it isn't ideal, in part because I have no outrigging support. Over here, I have some folding saw horses. They're not tall enough. So I have to rig this whole thing in order to support lumber. It just doesn't make sense to me. So my plan today is to come up with a solution based on an idea that I saw years ago from uh, Doug Reed and we'll see how far we can get. Another challenge, this chop saw isn't gonna work for this application because part of my problem with this saw is it's a sliding saw that extends out the back. So you can't use this up against the wall. Uh, yes, years ago I did post a video uh, where I was using my Bosch dual glide miter saw. It's a wonderful saw, I love it. It can go up against a wall with no issue. That particular one I have mounted on there, I think they call it the anti-gravity uh, stand. And it's a wonderful saw, but it takes up a ton of space. Um, well, when you're not using it, it'll stand up in the corner if you have a corner, but it takes up a ton of space in use. And I just want to come up with something a little bit different that would suit my needs better. So what did Doug Reed do? Well, he mounted a chop saw on a little base that allows him to mount it onto the way tubes of his shopsmith. I love that idea. You can just drop it in place, then you could use your extension table, your main table if you like, to support your longer stock. His idea was, if you were in the middle of turning, you could simply drop your saw on the other end of the machine, quickly make a cut, and uh, away you go. I think what would make that even more ideal is if we could also hang it on the wall and use it on the wall for simple, quick cuts. So there's where I'm headed. Now, one of the things that Doug did was he made it so it would somewhat to the way tubes. As he's chopping with that miter saw, he's not going to have it teeter and tilt. Um, that's a step beyond what I had done from sander that I made, which sat on the way tubes, but then had to be locked in place. I like how quick you can install his. My issue is with a sliding saw, there's going to be quite a bit of motion that uh, Doug is not experiencing with his chop saw, and I, I don't want that to come sliding off. So here's my idea of a shape that I might use for this stand. Um, you can see that this one is going to slide onto the way tubes this way and then drop in place, locking it so that not only will downward pressure not lift it, but also forward pressure. This is locked tightly in place, yet it'll lift off quite easily. So after playing around with that, I've already cut a couple pieces of Baltic birch that I'm gonna use for this application, and uh, they do fit in place. So one of the things I did is uh, after boring the holes to fit over the tubes, I made straight cuts and found that that was a little bit too tight. So I gave myself a relief cut here and a relief cut across the bottom, but I made sure I did not increase the size of this portion here. Um, I wouldn't want this to cause teetering. After cutting them, I brought my two pieces together, laid them up here, and aligned them just to make sure that everything is perfectly flush, and they are. If they weren't flush, uh, I would need to take some material off here or here to make sure everything's gonna fit. Now, how far apart do these go? Um, well, I, I would love to be able to use it here with my main table in place, and so that's limiting me. Additionally, I know that I have bolts that are going to go through the base of this new saw. Now, this new saw is going to have holes to bolt it down that are 14 inches apart. So I, I do want to make sure that I have this spanned at least beyond 14 inches. And the other reason I don't want to go too skimpy here is I may put a drawer underneath this and why not make it as wide as it can be. Um, I did learn years ago not to 
to build tables that don't overhang their bases because you never know when you might want to add a clamp or something. And if you make the sides flush with the top, you've eliminated some functionality. So I've installed my table in place. I have my extension table here. A case I've got about 22 and a half inches that this top could be. Unfortunately, <laughs> the, uh, the manual doesn't give me the overall dimensions of the saw. Based on the dimensions of my Hitachi saw, which I hope are close to the saw that I've ordered, um, I've, I've made the height here to allow that saw to sit here and to still have these tables work with the main table at its lowest point to be able to clear that saw. If I'm wrong, I may have to, to change something here and adjust the height of either the sides or the thickness of the top or a spacer. I'm gonna find all that out when the saw arrives. As for the depth of this, um, again, I was basing it on the Hitachi, but there's a feature on this saw, the little pad that's supporting the very, very front end of that saw. <clears throat> and, I, and I'm guessing at where it's positioned. So right now, these pieces are 18 inches. I plan on adding three quarters of an inch at the back. And I don't mind having an inch or so overhanging if I'm still going to have access to a drawer. So that would put me at about, let's say, 20 inches, maybe 20 and a half, maybe 22. I think I'm going to go ahead and go with 22 mm -hmm. inches in depth. And then that way, um, I, I think that's going to give me the leeway that I need. So my thought about mounting this on a wall cleat, um, I have to give this a little bit of consideration. Um, basically, what you do is you make a rail that's going to go between the two side pieces and that has a 45 degree cut in it. So that rail could mount here and then a rail on the wall, a cleat on the wall would connect into that piece when you're hanging it on the wall. Problem is if you have an entire wall full of cleats, as I know some people do, um, you're not going to be able to hang this unless you notch some material away from this piece or if you install that um, that cleat on the back so that there's nothing here to interfere with the cleat mounting to the wall. Um, think that through if you build something like this. I'm going to put mine between the sides because I'm not going to have a wall full of cleats. I'm just going to make a single cleat to hang this on. Now I know that one of these pieces is going to mount onto the base. I, want to, I think I want to use the wider one so that way I have a narrow cleat on the wall. Because it really doesn't matter. They could have been the same size. Made a mark here at 18 inches. I'll just cut that off at the chop saw. The one that mounts to the wall needs to be a bit shorter. So I've me measured that one out at 17 and a half. And we'll cut those off and be done with it. So next we're going to mount this cleat um, between the two side members. Uh, you just have to remember which way to face this. You got this 45 degree cut. It's going to mate with a cleat that's mounted on the wall with the, the widest face facing away from the wall, the narrow face facing the wall, and then this will slide down and catch it. So that means this is gonna go inside, and I need to figure out then where do I wanna put my pocket screws. Um, pocket holes work best when they're being into the mass of the material. So if I have a side here that ends here, I, I need my pocket holes to come in from the back of this piece onto my base. So a uh, quick little mark, just to remind myself that this is where my pocket holes go so I don't confuse myself. Now I have several Craig jigs. Uh, I love them. I think they're all really interesting. One that was interesting to me that I'm, I'm still on the fence about is this one right here. I don't know what they call it. Um, what I find it to be useful for is those situations where I used to use just the single clamp on pocket, pocket rocket, whatever they called that thing. Uh, this is cool because it has a clamp that's built into it. I can take it to larger pieces and clamp it to those pieces as opposed to bringing those large pieces to the jig. Um, this is by no means large, but this is currently handy. So that's what I'm going to use. Uh, and I'm just going to align this and drill two holes 
and just match it on the opposite side. So no magic. What I do want to do is to make sure I'm not putting a pocket screw right here where I just cut that miter. So we're kind of favoring this edge right here. It's a good thing I stopped and checked because uh, I had the stop collar. I just I grabbed one of these that I had been drilling two by fours with and, and the stop collar was so far off, I would have drilled all the way through the base of this jig. There's a hole there from someone who did that. I won't say who it was, but it, <laughs> it can't be done. Yeah, you gotta adjust that stop just right. Anyway, we'll just continue. Uh, corded drills do much better at this than cordless. I also just heard from my bride that Amazon says the saw is a few streets away, so. All right, we're good. A little tear out, but otherwise we're good. Wow. Quarter drill. Again, here's where the decision making comes in. Uh, if you're going to have this rail captured between the two sides, you're going to mount that within with the pocket screws or dowels or however you choose to attach it. If you're going to hang it on a wall cleat that's already in place, then this needs to be attached to the back side, outside of the sides. I'm going inside the side. Oh, I screwed up. <laughs> doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but I screwed up. I got my pocket holes on the inside on this side and on the outside on this side. Eh, that happens. By the way, you might be asking what screws am I using? I'm using the Craig screws, however, they recommend the coarse thread for uh, wood. They recommend the coarse thread for softwoods and plywood and the fine threads for hardwood. But Baltic birch, I find, I like the, uh, the fine threads better. They, they hold just fine and I don't get any splitting um, as I do when I use the coarse threads with this. I think the Baltic birch behaves a bit more like a hardwood anyway. Now, if I do wind up adding a drawer to this, I wanna make sure that these two sides are parallel. Um, I've been measuring from the outside here just to get the proper spacing, but I do know that that backboard is 18 inches, so I wanna make sure the front opening is 18, and I've got a little bit of leeway here before I add that screw. The plan is to take this whole thing apart and glue it. Um, I can, again, always remove these screws and reinstall them, but I just want to double check that everything's going to fit just right before I actually glue it in place. All right, let's see if this is going to fit. Oh, no wonder I installed it backwards. Oh, my screws are in the right place. <laughs> Why didn't you catch that? What a maroon. Perfect. 
it's harder than it should have been. I just realized my audio is messed up. That's also awesome. But just in the nick of time, just in the nick of time, because I got places to be, this has arrived. And look at that. The entire box fits exactly on this base. So that, that's promising. Um, I'm going to get this unboxed. You don't need to see that. Uh, so I'll speed it up. Oh, dude, I have so much room. Wow. This is going to be nice. Let's, I guess I need to connect some things before I can do everything I need to do. But we will absolutely clear a wall back here. Beautiful. Right there, there's our culprit. So it's got to be further forward than that. Right about there would allow me to go to 45 degrees. No problem anywhere else. Okay. Plenty of clearance because I have plenty of room. That dimension, by the way, if you've got the saw, is going to be ooh, just a, a hair shy of six inches. So in, in my case, I have plenty of room. We can just push it on out into that the back of the casting. We can set that at six inches and we'll be fine. Now, here's what I was talking about, what I, I had a little concern that I might need some support out front for this little foot. And, and I think that they've done that in case you don't bolt this to something that's gonna keep it from tipping forward. Um, my thought was that this piece would be big enough that that would catch that. But if I push that back far enough to where this is gonna be on the table, I think that puts me in danger at the back. Let's check that. I might be wrong, I'd be happy to be wrong here. So for sure we have clearance here, but what about 45? Nope, that's going to be a problem. So really, this table here, if I could make it again, if I could make it an inch deeper, then I could absolutely accommodate this at the proper depth and be sure I'm supporting that little foot on the front. Uh, think about that. Maybe we'll add a support out there. Shouldn't be the end of the world. The bolt holes on that saw are about 3 eighths of an inch, and so I'm going to use a couple 3 8 16 T-nuts. They're going to be driven in from the bottom of the support. The bolts will pull up on them, and that will anchor them. Yeah, it's one thing about T-nuts. Sometimes you'll see them installed incorrectly with the, the wrong side facing up. We won't do that. Drilling an 11 and a half millimeter hole for this. Ah, yes, the sound of tear out. <laughs> Oh, plenty, plenty of tear out. Let's talk about cap screws. That's about right, though. Oh, look what I'm seeing. <laughs> that that hole is not a through hole. There's a hole on down there that's a much smaller diameter. Well, looks like we could use quarter 20. So I'm going to use some Bittner nut, nuts underneath here for now. And uh, we'll think about what's next. That'll work. 
Yeah, Bittner nuts will work for now. Uh, if I if I choose to leave those in, then that means I have to make a drawer that's going to be shallow enough to clear the Bittner nuts. Um, that's not the best choice. We'll figure something else out. But it's secured now. I should be able to put the saw through its paces. And, uh, yeah, let's see if we can take this thing off without getting a hernia. So to do this, you want to make sure that you've locked everything in place. We'll tilt this back, and then I should, <laughs> should be able to lift this off. Let's figure out where the best lifting point is. Probably right there. All right. There, from there, I should be able to carry it by the handle on the top of the saw. Installation is easy. Cool. I just had an interesting thought. Um, was measuring where I would want to put this cleat on the wall. And the thought occurred to me, well, I can position it so that this will be at exactly the same height when mounted on the wall. Um, my, my muscle memory will build from using it at that height. Or I could put multiples of these on the wall at different heights for when my grandkids come over to work in the shop. That's actually a pretty cool idea. But for now, I'm going to position this just a couple inches lower on the wall since I do know my grandkids do come to the shop a bit. And uh, so I stuck this cleat back here, engaged it with the other cleat, and measured to the bottom, subtracted a little bit. I'm going to go 30 inches from the bottom of this cleat to the floor. That doesn't matter to you, but that's where I'm going to position this. Now, this cleat right now, to fit between those, comes in at 17 and a half inches. So theoretic theoretically, I could mount this to two studs, if only my studs weren't 24 inches apart. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to mount this in the center at the stud, and I'm going to use a couple wall anchors on the two ends. My favorite wall anchors are the uh, the snap toggle, but this particular anchor right here, this is another, uh, I think it's an easy toggle, would be my, my second favorite, my backup. So I'll use these on the sides, screws in the center on the stud, and then that should lock everything in place firmly. Okay, where's my cleat? Under my arm. How many times has that happened? Gosh. So what I have is one fast cap power head screw. That's going to go into my drywall. I need a second one. I just don't have it right now. This would also be a great place for a spirit level. This particular screw has a Torx drive. So let's get that installed. And is that my height? Now, if you don't know the easy toggler, it's kind of a neat little the little fitting, it's got uh, what is essentially a brad point drill bit built into the end of it, so each one is a drill. And then once the hole is created, it has these nice large threads that will cut into the drywall. And then you take the screw, and the screw as it pushes in is going to cause this center section to pivot. Um, maybe you can see here, as I slide this machine screw in, there's a point right about here where it's going to begin to pivot. Hold on, I gotta see what I'm doing. Oh, no, there's a point right about here that as you push it in, it causes it to open up. And then your screw is screwing into this point. As you tighten it, it pulls tight against the back of the drywall. So we're not just relying upon this little threaded section right here, we're getting the support behind the drywall as well. Neat little connectors. But anyway, here you can see my cleat is in place. And hopefully without too much fuss, should be able to set this right on the cleat. 
Now again, for ideal strength, it'd be great to hit a few more studs. So perhaps I'll make that cleat more like a French cleat, a traditional French cleat that is a bit taller, at least in the center, so you can hit a few more studs. But for now, uh, this is at the very least great for storage of the chop smith when I'm not using it on my chop smith. Cool beans. All right, let's see how she cuts. Oh wait, there's a laser. I forgot about the laser. Oh, cool. It cuts right on the laser. I'm hoping that's adjustable. It should be able to adjust to one side or the other of the saw's curve. A little bit of tear out here on the top with that stock 40 tooth blade, I'm assuming. Yep, 40 tooth. It's a 10 inch blade, 5 eighths inch arbor, so it's, uh, it's standard. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Chopsmith. And notice, I also have the ability to use the Chopsmith extension table or even the main table while the Chopsmith is installed.